Hi folks, this is Amber Marie. This is part two to what is homesteading? Response to Jane Alt. And am I a homesteader? Okay, so in the last video, which I'm going to put these out back to back. Um, in the last video, I gave you a background. A, a very touched, just touch base on how my lifestyle came to be what it is. Now, from the last video, let's jam forward to the year 2000. Okay? I was hit by a drunk driver and that ended my music and medical career because I was paralyzed. So if you hear barking and growling, it's going to be Chrissy at one of the school buses. Um, there are a couple of kids that have kind of teased my puppies and the other two that they teased are gone now. Um, and she still doesn't like those kids. So she jumped up on my lap to say, good morning, I'm still here. <clears throat> but she's not vicious or mean or anything, obviously. You know, she's 17 pounds of just sweetness and prettiness and love. But she's a great protector. Okay, so am I a homesteader? Well, I would not call myself a homesteader even if I were able to be out on the piece of land I would love to be on in northeastern Arizona. Um, because this has just been my family's lifestyle for generation upon generation upon generation. And even my genetic family in Sicily, I come from farmers, guys, and fishermen. I come from farmers and fishermen, alright? Um, so I, I literally, it's in my blood and it's in my my soul that this is how we live. We are as, as independent from the mainstream as we can be because there's just too much in this world to handle, alright? And especially if you're ill like I am. Do I garden? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every season that I possibly have the physical ability, I plant my garden. Um, and I'm not talking flower garden, I'm talking food. Uh, I will be doing so this year. Our weather's been so back and forth this season that we're going to have some late planting. Now that limits what we can do because, guys, we get up into the 130s here on the ground. Yeah. Um, so our growing season is really weird compared to the rest of the country. And for those of you that don't know, I live in, in the very, very, very western part of Phoenix. I am only a few miles, well, I used to only be four miles from <coughs> the westernmost mountains, which is the White Tanks. Um, I'm now 10 to 12 miles away, I think. Maybe 15. But where I live used to be a big farm. It used to be a huge family farm that my family was friends with. And I live in the last original home built by the family. And it was built when I was two years old and it's been renovated. It's absolutely, it's not stunningly beautiful inside. It's simple. It's ceramic tile. It's, you know, three, one of the rooms was converted into half of it. It's a bedroom now. Um, they enclosed the porch and turned it into a, a family room, which for me is just a mud room. Um, it's the room that my puppies used to, because it's so tiny, it's the room that my grandson plays in and my puppies go out back. Okay, that's where my back door is. I've got a quarter acre out back. Um, sadly, I've got almost a quarter acre out front that I can't use. Because it's all rock. Um, so, I cook our food, or my husband cooks our food, depending on my health at that point. Takeout is a rarity in this household. You know, Taco Bell or anything like that. That's quite a rarity in our home. Because 
I just prefer to make our own food. It's how I grew up. I know what's going in our food at that point. I know where our food is coming from. I know what we're eating. I still, to this day, only get my eggs through Hickman's. I will not eat these Eglin's Best and all that. No. I don't know what the heck they're putting in their eggs or their chickens for their less cholesterol. I don't want to eat it. Alright? If I'm going to eat eggs, I'm going to eat the egg that came out of a chicken that wasn't chemically modified. Um, I do not hunt. I do not. I do not. I'm a great shot. I do not have A, the area we don't have animals to hunt. Um, I would have to go hours and hours away. And with my spinal problems, that ride would be, it would take me days up there to recuperate to be able to hunt. And one day of hunting would put me down for two weeks. So, no, I don't hunt. And my husband's a city boy. So that's never going to work. Um, and for me, I, I, it's a personal thing that unless it is a matter of life or death, I can't kill a furry creature. I, I just don't have that in me. I'm trained to, sadly, trained to kill a human being on behalf of my country if necessary. But it's very different. That's that's saving your nation. That is a, something you live with forever and you never get over. And above and beyond all that, I'm trained to save lives. And my choice was to be trained to save lives. When I can, I still go fishing. Um, a friend of ours lives in, in Washington State and our salmon comes from his fishing. Okay? And we don't go to the grocery store and buy our fish, guys. Um, we don't go to the grocery store and buy our zucchini or our eggplant or our yellow squash when season comes around. Now, sadly, I do not have the equipment to can. And with our current situation, I cannot afford a pressure canner. I wish and pray that eventually somebody will go, you know what, I've upgraded and I'm going to send this one out to Amber Marie because we don't use it anymore. And it's, you know, smaller than what we need because it's me and my husband and puppies. Guys, that's, you know, so my canning would be for us. And yes, I'm sure my kids are going to steal some of it. But I would love to can. I would love to because my grandma did when I was a little girl. And I... I truly miss those flavors. And my Granny Perkins, who was a neighbor that I grew up with and, and loved very much, she was from Austin, Texas, um, she canned. Into her 80s, this woman canned. And so I grew up with this mentality that we do for ourselves. As Americans, we do for ourselves. I didn't grow up in a disposable lifestyle. And I have no desire to live a disposable lifestyle. My husband has adapted to my way of thinking that we don't live that way. His family were all very city. They were from um, an area in Michigan that's a city. So, you know, they didn't hunt and fish and their food came from the store. All right. So that's just, you know, it's... Do I consider myself a homesteader? Yeah, I do. Because I will forever, forever live by the principles that I was raised with. And I taught them to my kids. And now I'm teaching them to my grandson. Um, no, I cannot have livestock. So instead I have American Eskimos. Um, and after my babies passed away and I was left with one of my babies, my Chrissy here we began rescuing and not by intention God just kept throwing them at me so I ended up with kind of this esky rehabilitation situation I am certified to train service animals 
and I that's what I'm doing I knit our winter wear and our, our blankets I either sew them or knit them um, you know we're country folks guys I, I'm a country girl my husband's a city boy who's learned to live with a country wife yes I had a music career in country music guys so yeah to the extent that I'm able to do I am not an, an urban homesteader because we live in a fairly rural neighborhood fairly it's become mostly urban <coughs> but there are rural right around us very close by and those are what are called county islands and uh, because I have a large enough piece of property I still live that lifestyle I just don't have livestock guys and with my health in truth and, and absolute honesty I wouldn't even try if I could because I do not feel that I could provide those animals with the care that they deserved I have a hard enough time just taking care of and spoiling my puppies okay and that's enough for me in animals we still look at rescuing to re rehabilitate and rehome when it's sent to us we do not look for them um, my husband and I have huge Facebook accounts um, I rarely look at mine because I have too much to do to be on electronics constantly and this eats up enough of my my internet and time I'm not a sit on the phone and talk person I'm not just not that girl girl I'm almost 47 but I'm not that girl I'm you know if I if I've got a sore throat I, I use honey if I've if I've got a cold I, I turn or a bad cough I turn to cinnamon tea because cinnamon's a natural cough suppressant it also helps in weight loss um, and several other things you know I will always be the daughter of a Navy man that was Cherokee Scott Irish and raised to be self-sufficient and I will carry that on for as long as the good Lord allows me to do so now my absolute love and respect for Jane all comes from this when they had a life-changing event with his wife he didn't take the easy way out folks he didn't do that to her he did what a loving husband would do and he got her home and he and his, his family take care of her as much as is possible and to me that's what marriage is and that to me makes him a very honorable man um, not one word that has ever come out of, of John's mouth has been misleading that I'm aware of not on YouTube at least and I, I just he's just one of those guys he's like me he's lived both sides of the the world so to speak you know um, culture and he's like me he prefers to be as self-sufficient as possible so on that note I'm going to end this video and if y'all have any questions for me please by all means by all means contact me either via my email which is listed in the description below <coughs> or on here please like and subscribe I would love to have my subscription numbers go up to where I can actually do other things on YouTube um, I wouldn't really care except that it limits what I can do if you know being at a low number of subscribers so please like and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you all have a great day a very blessed day so on that note my prayers are with all of you God bless Bye-bye.